Be able to boast that if gallantry, generosity, and fidelity were lost in this world, people would be able to rediscover them in your own heart. A quote from Balthazar Gracie. This morning, St. Paul tells us that there are some people in the church whose lives are so extraordinary that they are worthy of imitation. Or to put it in Jesus' own words, these people truly are a light unto the world. They truly are a city on a hill, shining in that midnight sky. They truly are a lamp on a stand, illuminating the dark room. And if the Christian religion were to completely vanish from the face of the earth, the fullness of the gospel and the fullness of God's love would still be able to be rediscovered in their heroic act of self-denial and compassion. Gracian also wrote once that one of the wisest things that we can ever do in this lifetime is get to know the great people of our generation the wise people of our generation. But he also warns, there's not many of them. It's slim pickets. Several hundred years ago, he wrote that there is more required nowadays to make a single wise person than formerly to make seven sages of ancient Greece. And more is needed nowadays to deal with one single person than was required to deal with a whole people in former times. If this was true hundreds of years ago, how much more true is it today? Which just makes his words all the more urgent for us to take to heart. Get to know the great people of your time. Get to know the wise people of your time. But there's not many of them. Now the question I have for you this morning is it, are you getting to know the wise people of your time, the great ones of your time? The question I have for you is, will you be remembered as one of those great ones? Will you be remembered as one of those wise ones? Are you that lamp on a stand, that city on a hill, that light of the world? Can other people find themselves Find enlightenment simply by being in your presence, being in your company. Can they see in your example the type of life that they know that they need to be leading for themselves? Can they see God's kingdom come by the way you live out your life? Can they see Christ's love by the way that you live out your life? Is your life worthy of being imitated? Is your authenticity worthy of imitation? Is your courage worthy of imitation? Is your work ethic worthy of imitation? How you spend your time, how you deal with boredom, is that worthy of imitation? Is your bravery in the face of temptation and trials worthy of imitation? Your habits, are they? worthy of imitation? Is your level of compassion for others worthy of being imitated? How you speak to other people, how you talk about them behind their backs, is that worthy of imitation? Is your zeal for life, is your joy in the face of adversity worthy of imitation? If you have a hard time answering those questions, let me simplify it for you. When the little children in our church look at your life, can they see everything that they know they should grow up to be one day? Will you be remembered as one of the great ones, as one of the wise ones, by them when they get to the end and they look back on your life? Will others be able to boast that if all of the gallantry and generosity and fidelity in the world were lost, 
they would still be able to discover these virtues in your own heart. If your answer to any of these questions is no, how about instead of giving up things like chocolate for Lent, you give up those things that are holding you back from becoming the person that others around you need you to be for them. If your answer to any, any of these questions is no, how about instead of giving up meat on Fridays, you give up all of those vices that are distorting the image of God in you, that are hindering God's love from flowing out of you. If you answer no to any of these questions, how about you give up those things in your life that keep people from seeing in you those virtues that they know that they need for themselves? My friends, you want to know the difference between a wise person and a fool? It's actually quite simple. The wise person, the wise person doesn't wait until tomorrow to become the type of person that everybody needs them to be 